What's up YouTube, it's James Q Quick, and today I wanna to show you how to use the .env npm package to get environment variables into your Node application when you're running locally. That was a mouthful, but let's go ahead and dive in. So we've got the .env npm package open here, and uh, I just wanna kinda of start out with what the use case is for this. So you're writing a node application for example and in your node application you don't really want to, you typically don't want to include sensitive information like API keys in your source code. Typically you'll put them in environment variables and in production depending on where you host, if you host uh, with most hosts, if I'm saying that a lot, uh, will allow you to create environment variables in their UI. So in Netlify, for example, which I've been using a lot recently, or uh, Azure for a web app, or uh, Heroku for hosting web applications, you can create environment variables that your application can then use by accessing it via process.env.variable name. So the difference here is we want to be able to do this in production because obviously, or excuse me, in development because when we're in development, we're not hosted somewhere, we're just running locally and we want to be able to simulate that we've got uh, our environment variables that would live out in production. Now often these variables when you're running locally will differ, right? Because when you're in production, you'll obviously be connected to a production database, for example. And when you're in local, you'll be connected to a local database, for example. So. Let's go ahead and set up in VS Code a sample node project. So the first thing I'll do is do an npm init and package.env test, sounds good, version one, uh, test for .env package. Spell correctly, entry point, index, that's fine. Test command, no, git repository, no, keywords, author. Yeah, that looks good. So we should have our package.json. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and install Express. So npm install Express. Now if you're a Node person, you're probably familiar with what Express is. It's just a framework that sits on top of Node for doing, uh, what's the best way to put this? Your, your endpoint definitions, I guess. There's probably a much better word uh, for, for what Express is. And the actual wording from their website is a fast, unopinionated, minimalist web framework for Node. Basically what, the, what we're gonna do is be able to set up a Node server really super quickly. And since this isn't that important, this isn't a super important part of uh, what we're doing, I'm just gonna copy and paste in some boilerplate code. So I'm going to create an index.js and then open the index.js and uh, copy in the boilerplate code here. So we've got Express installed. We're going to require Express. Then we'll create an, an app, the app from the Express constructor. And then we're gonna set our port to 3000. Now obviously 3000 right here is hard coded and we'll come back to that in a second. So uh, what happens here is when you do a request to the root, so you do a get request to root, it's gonna return back the string, hello world, and that's an uh, endpoint definition. Then we've got the listen, which actually starts the server and it listens on this port and then just kind of tells you which port it's listening to. So to get this started, I can run node index.js and it says example app listening on port 3000. And if I scroll, if I scroll over and go to localhost 3000, we should see that it returns with hello world. All right, so we've got our web server set up. Now, when you deploy a node application to production, you typically don't know what port you're gonna run on. Usually your host will assign a port to your application and you will get, you will receive that port from process.env. Yeah, it looks like uppercase port is what they'll typically use. So uppercase port like this and often your environment variables will be all uppercase and if it has two words, it'll be something like that. So port all uppercase and underscores between words. So notice if I run this now though, if I cancel this and try to run again, it's gonna say app listening on port undefined, which is probably not good. And if I try to come here to 3000, obviously it's not running there because it's running at undefined. And I wonder, is there any way that this actually runs at undefined? I'm thinking no, but it's worth a shot. Okay, no. 
worth a shot. So what we want to do is basically use the .env package to pretend that we've got environment variables and get them locally and bring them into our app. So I'm going to close out uh, the application. I'm going to npm install, and I think it's just dot env. Yeah. So dot en oops env. Go ahead and install that. I'll come back. Well, actually, I was going to pause, but it finished so quickly that I didn't need to. So we've got dot env included in our package uh, JSON and our node modules here. And what I'm going to do is create a file that is literally dot env and my icons pick it up as a special uh, special thing. And all these are key value pairs uh, like this. So port equals 3000, API key equals da -da 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 something, uh, DB connection is da -da 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 -da. These are all strings, obviously. Um, so I can define any amount of variables that I want. These are typical ones that you'll see, your port, API key for something, your database connection string or whatever it is, it uh, doesn't really matter. So let's, um, we've got the .env saved and we've got the package included. So maybe if we run our node index, it's still undefined. So there's one more thing that we need to do, which is pretty straightforward. And it's just, uh, this one is here, uh, this line that's here. So require.env and then the .config so as early as possible, go ahead and do this. Well, let's go ahead and do this before we try to access the port. And if I save this and run again, restart this, hopefully we'll see we're running on port 3000. And just to kind of prove a point, I can do a log of the other ones. So process.env.port, actually let's do that. Well, no, uh, not port, but API key. And we'll do this, oops, not there. Do the same thing, but for DB connection, if I can type that appropriately. So let's restart. And we should see, here's the API key, here's the uh, DB connection, and then we're running on port 3000. So this is something you guys will probably, if you do any kind of, if you do any node development specifically, or if you use any of the modern frameworks, something like React that has a build system that uses Node, you can inject variables in the same kind of way using uh, .env, which is pretty sweet. So this is, again, when you go to production, your environment variables will probably be set up in the GUI or the UI for Netlify or Heroku or Azure, or whatever it is. But in develop, one, you probably want different variables to use, and then you want to be able to access those variables the same way you would if you went to production. So uh, this, let's see, I think you could you could even basically say if, if development run this command, if not, don't. Uh, but this same code can go to production. It won't be affected because you don't check in your .env file. These should not be checked in. So the key here, do not check in your .env file. One, you'll be checking in to source control your credentials, your private credentials. You don't want to do that. And then also when you go to production, I don't have to change this code at all. It will just pick up these variables, not from the actual file here, but from the environment variables in the host. All right, so if you guys are already using this, if, you're, if you guys are using environment variables in your host, which you probably are if you're doing anything with a host, and you haven't done this, you haven't used .env locally, let me know what you think. If you're new to this and you're gonna check it out, check it out, do a sample, do something like this. Let me know what you think. Uh, comment on, comment below, or reach out to me on Twitter at James Q Quick and let me know what you guys are working on. So thanks for checking out the video and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.